my name is Mayor Paul Tenhaken, and I thought I'd kind of kick off this afternoon by telling you a little bit about why you're here uh, and how we got to this point. Um, as many of you know, City of Sioux Falls was selected to be a participant in a program called the Bloomberg Harvard City Leadership Initiative. And part of that initiative allowed me to travel to, uh, to New York for several days and spend time with 39 other mayors from around the world. And I would say the theme for that four or five days over and over and over and over again was innovation, innovation, innovation. There's departments of innovation, offices of innovation, innovation teams. And came back to Sioux Falls and it was probably within 30 days that we had retooled uh, our department, one of our departments in the city to our Department of Technology and Innovation, which is now run by uh, Jason Reisdorfer. One of the initiatives, though, that uh, he was tasked with right away was uh, we wanted to tackle a big issue in our city in a new way of problem solving. And we looked at some of the challenges in the city or, or opportunities, depending on how you look at it. And something that comes up over and over again is transportation and transit. And we say transportation and transit, not just buses, but the way we get around our city. Transit today involves scooters and ride sharing and buses and light rails and cars uh, and bicycles and bike paths. Those are all parts of, of transit. And so how do we make transit more efficient in our city and, and more accessible to a wider range of people while keeping in mind that it costs money, while keeping in mind that we have to make sure that it doesn't uh, sink our budget in terms of what it costs to operate and so forth. So it's a challenge and a lot of municipalities have challenges with transportation. So rather than just saying to, to uh, our Sam board or to our real Sam, Trebelcock, uh, who oftentimes uh, is our transit, you know, main transit guy in the city, so why don't we bring together a new way of solving problems with what we're going to call a cross-functional collaboration team or what they renamed a core team. So we have people from across our city that were picked to bring together everyone from police to fire to finance to HR to health to uh, media to come together and say, okay, how can we attack this opportunity that we have in transit? And so this core team was born, and they've been spending the last several months tackling this problem. Uh, so before I turn over to Jason to kind of get into the details of this, I want to make one thing abundantly clear, and that is what we're going to see and hear today, this is the first time I'm seeing or hearing any of this as well. Uh, this is really an employee-led kind of grassroots effort to problem solving. This isn't a, well, the mayor's probably kind of saying, I'd like you to get here when this is all done. This is just kind of for optics, but we need to be sure we end here. Not at all. I'm excited to see what, where we're going and what we're coming up with uh, here. And because the uh, key in this whole process is that the best ideas don't live with any one person in the city. Um, they live in a, in a collective manner amongst all of us. And so that's what we're looking forward to bubbling up from this group. And I also have made it clear, and I really will shut up, is that failure is okay. All right, we're, and if we fail, we'll fail in a big, bold way. We're failing with mics and with presentations, and we're trying some new things, and that's okay. We just have to continue to keep learning from what we're trying. So do we expect to be just blowing up our transit system and starting over and having the system that makes $20 million in revenue every year starting in fiscal year 2020? Probably not, but maybe. We'll see. But that's okay. We're trying new things and we're being bold in our experimentation. That's why I'm really proud of this team. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, our Director of Innovation and Technology, Mr. Jason Reisdorfer. All right. Thank you, uh, Mayor, for that 30-second introduction that I asked you to kick it off, kick it off with. <laughs> that was perfectly executed and unscripted. Uh, <clears throat> At, at some point, we, I'll just recognize the fact that we have uh, some folks from the Harvard Bloomberg team um, dialed in and watching this live, and they'll be commenting throughout this uh, presentation. And so bear with us here as we try to do our best to let you guys hear and see everything that we're talking about here. But um, basically, this is our midpoint update. Uh, we've been working on this since December, and um, we're, we're about halfway through our modules. You can kind of see our progress. We have about three more to go, 
Um, but we'll get, this is the point where we get the mayor up to speed and, and anybody interested in, in what we're doing. And so um, this is basically our, our short agenda for today, um, explaining what the innovation track is, uh, talking a little bit about human-centered design, um, sharing with you uh, the problem statement that we've, that we've come up with uh, for this issue. This thing started as transform transportation in Sioux Falls, and now we're really honing in on the one or two key things key questions that we're working on. So sharing that with you, um, explaining some of the process that many of you have been a part of with our resident ideation sessions, uh, and then just sharing some lessons that we've learned and, and kind of telling you and the mayor what our next steps are going to be in this process. So, so before we really get into the different modules, welcome. Uh, I've got a, a quick video. This is, uh, this is three minutes, I think. And uh, throughout this process, one thing I knew that we wanted to make sure we did was capture uh, some video and some history and some testimonials of this thing. So um, our CityLink team has been filming uh, throughout the process and some of our interviews and they threw together this quick video. So take a look at this. is doing phenomenal. They have chosen to really come to this with an open mind, with a growth mindset, and the outcomes are showing. Um, you know, when you look at how the city of Sioux Falls is performing across the 13 cities that are part of this program, they are definitely the cream of the crop. And they're the cream of the crop because of the enthusiasm that they bring to the project every day and the organization. This is the midway point of the program. Ideation is always a tough challenge to get over when you've never done it before. Taking uh, problem statements and something totally unrelated and bringing it together into a new idea is a pretty foreign concept. It's designed to put the resident at the center. It's saying what is going to most benefit you as a resident of the city and then how in turn does the city help to manifest that. We started with, you know, transform the Sioux Falls public transit system. Today, we've really narrowed down to define that the true problem to be solved is how do we ensure an economic benefit of this system to residents of Sioux Falls as well as to the city. You know, no matter what this team comes up with, there's some movement behind making something happen. And you know, that's really the first step is making sure that there are leaders who are gonna kind of make that happen. And I think the fact that the team was able to bring in residents today to be part of this process was really exciting to see. And it means that you know, this team is really going above and beyond making this like a secret project that's happening in one corner of City Hall and making it accessible to the public, which is like a really exciting thing to see. And I think goes well for any idea the team puts forward. So that's, that's a real quick summary, basically, of what these guys are saying. And I just think it's so cool that the folks at Bloomberg and Harvard are saying Sioux Falls is crushing it, right? And, and the main thing that I think um, this team has really been successful with is bringing a high amount of energy to these things. I mean, you can see the faces of the interactions with the citizens. There's people laughing. It's having a good time. We're like, it, it's, it's enjoyable. You know, this is not something that it's, it's hard but we're having fun with it. And so I just really appreciate you know, their insights on that. Just some quick wins that we've gotten along the way, uh, not intentionally, but um, this, this winter when we had the cold snap, uh, Joe, you wrote about this you know, on January 28th. We, our transit team has a Slack channel. And for those that don't know, that's just kind of a space that we can all collaborate at. And we're constantly sharing what other cities are doing. Um, and, and lifting them up. And I think one of our, John, one of our team members said, hey, check out what this city is doing. They're offering free bus rides for these three days while this is happening. And so 
we quickly said, hey, can we do this? And, and Mayor Paul happened to be out of town. And so it was TJ and Eric and I were firing off texts with Sam and legal and bam, it just came together and said, we can make this thing happen. And so I think that's just a quick win that we've kind of experienced through this that probably wouldn't have come up if we hadn't been formed. And then uh, a couple weeks ago, you'll see some of these posters right here. Uh, a school asked us to come visit. They asked the mayor to come visit, not me, but they asked the mayor to come visit and it happened to be my daughter's school. And so I said, well, if I'm going to your school with the mayor, you guys are going to have to do something for us. So I want you as fifth graders, as a class, to come up with your best solutions to the transit problem. And so when Mayor Paul and I walked into the school, there was like 70 of these presentations lined up around their lunchroom and six groups of students presented to us awesome presentations from fifth graders. And if you get up and, and look closely, the things that they're suggesting are the same exact things that the citizens are suggesting and our core team is suggesting. So if fifth graders and residents and core team can all say the same things that, that are being suggested, I think we're probably onto something here. So I just think, again, that's just a cool piece that's been happening. Um, so with that, we're going to kick it off with uh, Mike Gramlich. He's going to kind of take us through one of our, our first modules. We're going to start with human-centered design. Uh, you can look around the room and in a quick second figure out that this is a fairly different method of problem solving. Uh, when we move on through that process, it's, it's an iterative process. We try to define the problem. It's not completely unique from other problem solving processes, but the human-centered component of it, that's where the magic is. Uh, from the get-go, we focused on the people involved. Uh, for us, it started uh, with us, with the people involved in the problem solving process to begin with. For me, the easiest way to describe that is to start with this human for a minute, just center on, on me. Uh, it started with an email from some of our directors or supervisors asking if we were interested in going on this journey. Of course, we said yes, because it sounded exciting. It then quickly turned into a conference call with Harvard Bloomberg. And before we knew it, we were, I at least, was walking in tentatively to the war room, newly coined war room. And it had that distinct feeling of a first day of school. There were definitely kids at the tables who had friendships already. Uh, honestly, by the end of my, my long walk into the room, I was just hoping that there was room at somebody's lunch table for me. Uh, but it also had that distinct feeling of opportunity, of potential. You couldn't help but feel that it was auspicious at, at best, right? So we moved on. I will talk about feelings throughout. I'm a firefighter, that makes sense <laughs> to all of you. Uh, we started with an initial problem statement and it was to transform public transit. At this point, we had all come together. We had our initial problem, we didn't know a lot about it. Um, as a side note, for those of you who do know me, I believe sincerely that everything I've ever needed to know I learned from comic books, specifically from superhero stories. And the one thing that I think is salient for today's lesson is that superheroes always do the work. They're always prepared and they're always ready. We had clearly, at this point, been assembled for a task. I'm going to refer to us today as the Justice League, if you'll allow me that, that option. Uh, I'm not saying that for a second, transforming public transit is our Lex Luthor, but I'm not, not going to say that either. So, we had gotten together, we had a diverse skill set, a lot of different talents. Uh, it was evident we were ready to hit the ground running. We moved forward at this point with what we knew. And it was quickly evident that little did we know how little we knew. This is a great quote. It's John's quote. He brought it up and we're, with hindsight, it's easy to see that this quote, and I'll read it just for folks in the back, if I had an hour to solve a problem and my life depended on the solution, I would spend the first 55 minutes of that hour determining the proper question to ask. For once I know the proper question, I could solve the problem in less than five minutes. That's a quote from arguably one of the greatest intellects of all time, Albert Einstein. I feel like he's worth listening to. I think in essence what he's saying is if you have a limited amount of time to make a decision, make sure you know what you're trying to solve before you take off for the solution. That really has been the battle cry for us from the get-go. Um, and it's, it's great that with hindsight, we can see that so clearly now. Uh, in the end, he's saying, make sure that you do the work. Define the problem and you'll be ready to go. And this, at this point, is what we set out to do. So I get to keep touching on human-centered design. You're going to see it throughout the process. The way that I've chosen to frame it, I started with this human. I will now move to the rest of the humans in the problem-solving process. 
One of the first experiences that we had in our boot camp, which was a two-day process that kind of kicked this whole thing off, we talked openly about what, how we felt, really. The questions that we asked are, what do I not want to happen? What do I not want to feel? What do I want to have happen? What do I want to feel? And my favorite, how do I want others to feel? I observed, there's a lot on those boards, but really what I distilled out of that exercise is that as a group, we, were, we wanted to make sure that we were purpose-driven, that our contributions mattered, and I think most importantly that we always started from a place of empathy and compassion. And I can't tell you how empowering that was to come to that realization as a group, knowing what we had ahead. Uh, it was just, a, it was a great moment in time and it's something I'll remember forever. So we had set our expectations for the process and now we set out to put everything that we know about transit, or at least what we thought we knew on transit, on paper. And I do have to apologize, we're the innovation team, so there's no chance we were gonna stand in front the entire time and use a PowerPoint. We brought you here for a reason. I'm gonna move around, do your best. I appreciate your, your uh, indulgence on this. We set our expectations, we did a mind map. This was in essence a dump of everything that we knew about transit on a piece of paper. And I, I think it looks like that. Uh, at this point in time, we realized that this was once again only what we thought we knew. Uh, it, it was clear that we were going to need more information. So we moved on to rider interviews. Again, if some of you don't know me, I really like people. Not like kinda like people, I really like people. So this was the most enjoyable part for me by far. We were able to head on out, join people in their commutes, whether they were running errands, whether they're going to work, and we just got to talk with them. We got to engage them where they were, we got to hear stories. Uh, we probably told a couple stories. Uh, it was supremely enjoyable. Citizens were able to interact with us. They asked us questions, a ton of questions. Uh, they asked a lot of questions that didn't have anything to do with transit. As a side note, if you run around with this much fashion sense, people are gonna ask you questions. <laughs> and they did. I'm gonna share one story. We took all the information that we gleaned from the writers and we tried to lay it out here, but I want to highlight this one right here. It, you can't see it. It says drivers are dope. And it was really important to the gentleman who shared this observation with me that I captured it correctly. And of course, what he was saying is that the drivers are fantastic. They do a great job. In fact, we got resounding feedback that the transit employees were by far its greatest strength, something that the city has always known, right? Always known that. But it gave us the opportunity to talk about something that really we never would have had the chance to do. This young man had noticed through his commute daily that folks on wheelchairs and scooters would get off the bus, oftentimes have to drive in front, and they'd cross at the crosswalk. At night, he noticed a lot of their conveyances, whether it was a wheelchair or a scooter, didn't have much for reflective tape. They were very hard to see. And he shared that he was genuinely concerned that someone would get hurt. First and foremost, he and I would rarely have had an opportunity to even discuss that. So it was great that we did. But then, as, as evidence of what Jason touched on earlier, this ability for us to collaborate, it was as simple as a, an email to Sam from Sam, got some other resources together, and he might have the opportunity now to meet with some folks and help them with that process. And, and for me, that was a great takeaway from that experience. So you can see we took all of this, we clustered it up. What works, what doesn't work, what happens if the transit system isn't working or is broken? Some other observations that we couldn't really categorize. And you'll see this theme throughout the process. We kind of work to continually focus that information. At this point, we come upon one of our key learning moments. And really, it's a restatement of John's Einstein quote. Understanding the real problem is key to finding the right solution. And in this process, you can see we continue to move, and we started big and broad. Arguably, we started small and narrow because we didn't really know much. We blew it up. It expanded. And then we're going to spend all of this time as we move around the room continuing to make it sharper and more focused. And I, I have to do it. If you need a visual, I, I think that it looks like a snake that swallowed a basketball. So it didn't hit. You were right, Shauna. Okay. <laughs> 
So all of this work isn't for, is not for nothing, obviously. So it's led us to guiding questions. And again, this is one of those sharper focus moments. The four questions that we, that we came to here were how to create better efficiencies in the public transit system, how to utilize technology and other innovations to provide a better user experience and to increase ridership, how to expand service to support second shift workers, and finally, how to create public-private partnerships in the domain. Now, you're gonna hear more about these throughout the process, but for my purposes, we ended that day taking once again a moment to reflect on the members, the humans involved in the process, and what did we take away from that day? And there's quite a few on here, but the two I'm gonna focus on, the first is that we noticed that this is going to be hard. And it was great, because it wasn't a fatalistic concern, it was the idea that this is an immense task, that we're up for the challenge, and we have the process ready to go. And, and it has really carried us through what you see throughout this room. And the last one, and the one that's most uh, dear to me, is that we really enjoyed the collaborative process. And again, I can only speak from my personal experience. They don't let me out of the fire station very often. It's good judgment, I understand, but I hadn't had a lot of opportunities to work closely with other department members, especially in long-term projects. And I have to say, it has by far been the stuff for me. That's been the greatest part, without question. And I genuinely look forward to other change initiatives where we can use this similar model. So speaking of extraordinary teammates, I'm gonna hand it to Shauna Nelson. So over here, all of you guys have been identified as stakeholders. After identifying the guiding questions that Mike just went over, we then started brainstorming who are the stakeholders in the room. Um, employees, schools, hospitals, we then mapped each one of the stakeholders um, from low influence to high influence, um, high interest to low interest. And from there, we were able to then group each one of the stakeholders into four sections. One being current riders. Um, we have people who own cars. We have businesses and as well as um, developers. From there, each of the core team members decided where they're gonna focus the next month and a half on um, developing more answers to these four guiding questions by meeting with the stakeholders, conducting interviews, riding on the buses, and hitting all of the routes. And so from there, all of that data, we, we then came together and we plotted all around the room so that we could get it all together. What is everybody wanting to say? What is everyone thinking? How do our stakeholders feel about creating better efficiencies? What are they saying? How do they want to expand the service? Um, how do we create public-private partnerships? And from there, each one of the core team members then basically grouped and clustered different themes. And those themes came from their ideas of travel time, how the transit system is really designed, different route ideas, for expanding our service, we grouped, we don't have any service on Sunday, we really like that. Um, dynamic routes, more routes and buses, and um, getting back to where the workforce is coming and going, how they're getting from point A to point B. So after we came through, grouped all of the guiding you know, questions, we, uh, we want to focus down on more of the core problems. So we voted on four specific insights that we came from here, and that was we want to focus on hours of operation, technology, routes, and the partnerships. And from there, I'm going to introduce John to go through the next part of our journey. So our initial problem statement was very broad, but now with the information that we have here, we can narrow that down and kind of hone in that core problem statement to what you see here today. How to improve the economic benefit of the public transit system for both the residents and the city. When we talk about economic benefit, we're not just talking about dollars and cents here. It's, it's providing a service that benefits the residents of the community. It's giving them something that they want to use, and it's also giving them something that's sustainable. With the problem statement set for now, uh, it was time to engage our residents again. We invited 40 residents from the community out uh, to host an ideation session here in this room. 
uh, on these tables, you can still see some of the notes that were jotted down from that session. Um, you know, a lot of the ideas, we said the crazier the better because sometimes the crazy ideas were the ones that panned out into something bigger. So each table was given a scenario. They had some time to brainstorm that scenario and come up with ideas for it. We then compiled those all into these two lists over here and they were able to vote on the ideas that they thought were most beneficial. And then from there, we took those ones with the highest votes, and then we performed another round of ideation. And again, voted on those ideas as well. So once those ideas were voted on, we took the top six of the most voted on ideas, and this is the list that you see over here. So we have artificial intelligence and analytics. So this could be anything from location-based alerts, uh, geofencing, targeted advertising, things like that. Uh, On-demand information on buses. So whether that's a mobile app that you can launch and know where buses are at all times, or a GPS on the buses, things like that. Uh, business partnerships. So some of the ideas that were brought forth here were like, uh, the Avera McKinnon Heart Hospital. Currently, there's no routes that go anywhere near that location. Could there be some type of partnership to where we run a custom route at certain times of the day to help those employees commute back and forth to work? Another suggestion that was brought up was maybe not create a whole nother route, but extend an existing route later into the night to help support those second shift workers who are probably getting ready to go to work now. Um, employer incentive programs. So this one you can kind of think about like a gym membership incentive program through your employer. So you ride the bus, go to the gym certain numbers of times, you get a credit. Uh, treat transit like infrastructure. So treat it like a road. Treat it like it's the basic necessity for everybody that's in the community. And then finally, expand fair payment options. So be able to accept credit cards on the bus. Um, again, maybe some type of mobile app that you can reload and use that as your payment method. Or just expand where you can purchase a regular bus pass. The skills that we've learned up until this point have been incredible. Uh, this process can really be tailored and tweaked to help solve so many problems within the city. Um, as of now, our Public Works Division is actually using this process to help tackle some of their BHAGs and other things that they're working on within their department. And as Mike alluded to before, understanding the real problem is a key to finding the right solution. And without engaging the community, we can't make any impactful difference in the system with the way it is today. Just real quick, you know, some of our next steps, we really have two um, coming up here. So, prioritizing uh, these ideas, legit. The, the, the dots that you put on this board are gonna help us as part of our process, okay? So helping us get down to these things, and you'll notice they're all pretty good ideas, right? And so um, it's not that we're just gonna take one and that's gonna be the answer, it's just it helps us prioritize which one you all think uh, is, is most meaningful to you. So prioritizing these things and then prototyping uh, ideas and testing them. So once we come up with um, the idea that's going to come next, we're going to build a prototype and we're going to say, and it's probably not going to go citywide. It's probably going to start as a pilot and we're going to test it and we're going to see what works and then we're going to get feedback and then we're going to come back again and we're going to do the whole process over again. So that's what prototyping is going to be and it's going to take a whole series of these before we really come down and sink into the solution for this thing.